In the rural city of Enid, Oklahoma, there will be a recall election next Tuesday over allegations of racism and white supremacy. Commissioner Judd Blevins was confronted at a candidate forum this week by residents who want to oust him for his alleged ties to a white nationalist group. While Blevins has tried to blunt the criticism, it has sharply divided this small town. I spoke recently to NewsHour's community correspondent Adam Kemp, who has been following this closely. So, Adam, let's go back to the start here. Judd Blevins has only been in office for about a year. Was any of his past association known before he was elected? Yeah, so when he was running for the city commissioner spot, which makes him part of Enid City Council in 2023, um, the local newspaper there did write a story that, um, you know, detailed some of his relationships with white nationalist groups, including Identity Europa, which uh, is the main group here uh, that he is alleged to have been a part of. Um, it, it detailed also that he had attended the 2017 uh, Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. And uh, when confronted by citizens, he, he had no comment, basically, and or wouldn't deny that he was part of one of these groups. So that was last year. Who, who started this current recall effort to get him out of office? Yeah, it's started by the Enid Social Justice Committee, which um, is just a, a group of citizens that uh, were concerned about his election. Um, specifically, I talked to uh, Connie Vickers and Nancy Presnell, who are two members of this group, and uh, lifelong Enid citizens. They, they confronted Blevins. They uh, held up a, a giant sign that they had had enlarged that allegedly showed him at the rally in Charlottesville holding a tiki torch and asked him point blank, is this you? And uh, Blevins did not answer their question and, in fact, according to them, ran away from them. Um, I, I ended up talking to those two women uh, just about confronting Blevins. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And it, you're not calling name-calling if you call it a duck, and the same with a Nazi. I was going on Facebook, and I went to a certain Facebook page, and I went under comments. And there I saw this picture, and I was just, you know, petrified that we had a, a city councilman, a guy running for city council that was, had been at Charlottesville. And so I started digging, I posted pictures, Nancy posted pictures, and we just started a, a campaign against him. That group ended up collecting nearly 350 signatures to initiate that recall petition. So has Blevins uh, answered questions about this? Has he said anything more recently about his associations or not? Yeah, for the longest time, he would neither confirm or deny uh, whether he was uh, a member of these groups or, uh, you know, a white nationalist or believed in white nationalist ideals. But this past week uh, at a forum held in Enid for the two candidates that are running for the spot, he did confirm that he attended the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. And he, he gave this reason as why he felt he needed to do it to attend. Because I felt it was important to protest the removal of statues of American soldiers, of American figures, that if they remove statues of men who, who fought in the Civil War, they'll move on to whoever they want. Defending, protecting, protesting against the removal of historical Americans is important to me. It's our history, it's our heritage, it's who we are. Blevins was later then asked to denounce white nationalism, and he responded that he couldn't denounce what he never was. So if, if Blevins keeps his seat and the recall fails, what do residents say that this means for their community? Yeah, talking to residents, they're, they're frankly embarrassed. They're, I think they've, a lot of them are embarrassed that he was elected in the first place, and now they're pretty petrified that he will be uh, re-elected and what that will do to their city's reputation. Um, beyond that, talking to, to folks, they're worried about you know, how the city will go about attracting uh, businesses to come do business there in their town and their ongoing relationship with Vance Air Force Base, which is based there in Enid. So if someone were to look at this and just say, well, this is just one small city council in Oklahoma, like what is the larger connection? Is there a larger connection to the white nationalist movement in this country? Yeah, I talked with Pete uh, Sami, who is an uh, expert on white nationalism in the U.S., uh, started studying it after the Oklahoma City bombing, actually, in 1995. Um, and he said that white nationalists were emboldened after the election of Donald Trump in 2016, and that getting into local elections has been a goal of theirs. So the danger of having white supremacists holding uh, local office is that this is part of their agenda, 
in terms of them being able to implement, execute various strategies, various plans as it relates to them wanting to create a, a white ethno state, for example, which is, um, you know, obviously a larger plan on the horizon for them. But there's smaller steps along the way that need to happen and having people hold a local office allow them to potentially achieve some of these smaller steps to the ultimate goal, really, which is, like I said, a white ethno state. Sumi also went on to say that uh, beyond getting into local elections and, and winning them is uh, the, the threat of normalizing white supremacy is one of the bigger threats uh, facing this nation. All right. NewsHour Communities correspondent Adam Kemp, thanks for this great reporting. Thanks.